In this video, I'm going to cover all of the things you know to get Teleprompt Pro running on your machine and how to use it. So let's start on our desktop and we're going to install the software. So if you just click your start button, type the word store and go to the Microsoft Store. And now you can search for Teleprompter Pro. And here you will get the option to install or purchase the app. You can also use the free trial. I've already installed it, so it's just a case of launching the app. Now, the first thing we need to do is get text into our teleprompter. And you do this through the edit script menu. Now, I've already got some text that I've cut from another program. So all I will do is just paste that in there. And what I usually do is put a few spaces here and do three, two, one. And it just gives you a little preparation before your speech. And if I now just close the editor, you can see the teleprompter is ready populated and ready to go. But let's go back and look at some of the other features of the edit script. First, you can obviously change the color of any text. So if you want to highlight certain parts, see, make this blue, and we can also do color highlighting. And then again, if I close the editor, you can see that those have been colored accordingly. Obviously that's not a very good combination. Let's go back. And then you've got the other controls you know, to make bold, underline, etc. The next is insert section marker. And what this will allow you to do, if you've got certain sections that you want to be able to jump to quickly in your script, just click in the area, click insert section marker. I'll do it in each paragraph. And now what you can do, if we look in here in the configure keys, you can see I have got some keys configured that you can change F8 and F9. And what I can do is just by clicking those, so if I click F9, it jumps to the next section marker there, and then the next section marker, and it jumps. So that's the section markers. And then finally, you can actually search for text. So if I start typing like this and enter, You're going to see there, click search, and it found the text there. So there's the search there. The word wrap is just what happens when the text is word wrap is usually best to be on, otherwise, it scrolls all along here. But it's your choice. If you want to start a new script, just click clear script. Now, what you need to do is set the text size that is comfortable to you. So this is just done by sliding this slider and it will do the text size appropriately. Equally, then you need to actually work out if the speed is good enough for you, and you can alter the speed of the scroll just by scrolling this, or you can actually type into the box here. So we've edited the script, we've set our scroll speed and the text size. You then also have the option to change the alignment. Or the font. Okay, once you're happy with that, what I suggest you do is you save that script. So it's just a case of clicking save and you can give it a name. And save. And now, obviously, you can reload that when you need to do the speech. Now, embedded in that file is all of the settings you made there, the scroll speed, the text size, etc. So if you want to have a speech that runs at different speed for different users, you can save the script multiple times with different settings. But let's move along with the feature set. So we've seen the edit script. So let's look at the other. Back to start takes you way back to the beginning of your script. So if you make a mistake and you want to start afresh, you can just go back to start. Play is 
obvious. Play and pause. Back skips back a few lines. Forward skips forward a few lines. Okay. Then we move on to mirror, which will mirror the text, which is needed if you're going to be projecting this in teleprompter glass. Invert. And speech recognition. I'll come to that later. And then here, it shows you the current file that is loaded. So now let's move on to the top menu. So we have microphone on off. So this is it for recording our audio and, vi and uh, camera on off to record video. Now, direct text entry, I'll cover that one, is if you want to temporarily not use the edit script menu, you want to actually make a few edits actually on the screen itself, you can enable direct text entry and this will allow you now to type in on the actual teleprompter itself. Okay. Remember that by default, spacebar will start and stop scrolling. Yeah. But if direct text entry is enabled, that will no longer be the case. Next, disable scaling. If you're going to resize this window and you want the text to remain the correct aspect ratio, you can click disable scaling. This is only available if you're not using dual screen. Next, there's the quick color changes. So we've got white on black. Now remember these colors, it won't overwrite these colors, but white on black, blue, yellow, yellow on blue, white, and then a custom color, double tap. You know, you can do red. Yeah, this one would need changing is because we did a, a highlight. Just quickly, that one. There we go. So, so yes, you can actually change the colors to whatever you wish. Okay. Go back to the default. Now the next option, menu open. Now, when you click play, all of the menus are hidden to give you the maximum real estate. However, if you do menu open, it will make sure this bottom menu always stays accessible. So even if I'm playing, you've got the transport controls to be able to control the teleprompter if you need to. That is menu open. Full screen is the same thing, but it will actually get rid of all of the menu bars. I could just do full screen. You see all of the menu bars are gone. And to bring it back, there you go. Show times brings up this dialogue, which gives you some information about the duration of your speech, words per minute, the scroll speed, etc. Controls overlay. Yeah, if you're working on a touch screen, this brings up this big set of transport controls, and these will do the play and pause in the same way as these bottom transport controls. Text alignment, yeah, moves the text left, center or right. Font, I'll have to change the font. And then the side triangles adjust the position of these triangles. So top, middle, bottom, off, or you can have an eyelight highlight bar instead. Now the reason for this is if you're using a standard teleprompter you usually want to be looking at the middle of the screen so you would have them set to middle. However if you're just using a standard webcam more than likely your webcam is at the top of the screen so you would set the triangles to top then you know that you should be speaking when you're here so that your eyes are nice and close to the webcam. So let's go back and I'll uh, now look at dual view. Dual view allows you to have two displays. So by clicking dual view, any displays that are connected to your machine, it can project another 
presentation for you. This allows you to have uh, a master and controller set up so you can have a presenter reading one screen while you control the teleprompter app in here. Cancel that. And now I'll enable camera. Unfortunately, I'm using the camera with the software that I'm using to record this, so we won't get the true functionality, but here we go. So when we enable camera, we get a choice of the cameras that are available on our machine and the microphones. And you'll also notice here we get a record button. So I'll test this and see if we get anything. But what you would do now, the record is separate to these. This is actually recording the video. So if I click here, you'll see a record icon appears and then we can record video. And we click stop. Well, we have the option to go to our recordings, which will take us to the folder where that recording is located, or we can preview the recording. Now, unfortunately, no recording was recorded for me there because I'm using the webcam. When you do preview recording, it will take you into a small interface that will allow you to make minor edits to that recording, trim the start, trim the end, and then resave the video. So let's now go into the settings. So in the settings, a lot of the things that you have on this menu are also duplicated. So uh, you can see this is the same option here, but there's also some extra items. So the first extra item is menu size. And if we click maximize, what this does, it will maximize the size of the icons to fit the, the dimensions of your screen. So you can see now it, it makes everything a lot more legible if you want to use it that way. Then we've got mirror menus. Now what this does is when we click the mirror, you see all it is doing is mirroring the text. If we click mirror menus, when we select the mirror option, you can see all of the actual menus are mirrored also. Auto restart means once it gets to the end of the script, it will automatically jump back to the beginning and, and restart. Then video preview size. When we enable this camera, an image of yourself will appear on the screen in a small window. You have the option of making that either full screen, the small window, or you can turn it completely off. I recommend if you're doing recording, you, you know, if, particularly if you're not on a powerful machine, you turn it off because it takes some processing power to actually do that preview. So you'll get much better recordings if you turn that off. Then we've got line width. And what this will do is, if you're wanting to focus your eyes towards the center of the screen, you can actually bring the text in as well. Okay. Recognition sensitivity. This is linked to a feature called speech recognition in the tool. So I'll jump out and show you that. So speech recognition. Yep. So speech recognition, once enabled, it will be listening for your speech. Now I've just got uh, in fictitious text in here, so I'm not going to get to the actual effect, but I'll, I'll explain how speech recognition works. What it is doing, it is looking for when, when you're approaching to the bottom of the text. So if you start reading words down here, it will automatically start scrolling the text up the screen for a few seconds, then pause again, and it will wait until you get to the bottom of the screen again. To use voice recognition, you must speak very clearly uh, and what I suggest is you have the, you know, you have as much text on the screen as possible so that it has more chance of hitting a word that is at the bottom of the screen. If I'm honest, I prefer to use the automatic scrolling feature because it controls the pace of your delivery. And then jumping back to the settings. Obviously the recognition sensitivity is just how sensitive it is at picking up. So if you find it's not activating very well for you, you can actually increase the sensitivity or decrease accordingly. 
Then we've got video resolution. So this is to do with the video recording functionality. You can specify the resolution that you would like to record at. So if you find that your recordings are quite jerky, you can actually reduce the resolution as well. Then you've got the option of MP4 and WMV. And what I tend to find is if your machine is less powerful and is struggling to make smooth video, WMV is less processor intensive. And we've already seen these items. Then we've got, again, the load script here, which is mimics the buttons at the top and the save script. Script editor. Now we've got customize menus. So if we click customize menus, if you don't like all of these, you never use a lot of these features, you can turn any of those features off. So you can customize the interface to your liking. Bring them back. Then you can actually disable the top menu entirely. You never use it, or if you want it really streamlined. And same with the bottom menu if you're just using a wireless controller. You've also got the ability to show a company logo. So if I click here, you can see it's saying TP, but you can actually select your own company logo and place that here as well. So let's move on to configure keys. So there's lots of keys in here, but you can actually customize what each key does within the program. This is useful if you're going to be using a wireless presenter mouse, you can actually configure all the keys to that presenter mouse so that you can stand away from the screen and control the teleprompter wirelessly. An interesting option here is mouse wheel controls scroll speed. If we turn this on, if you have a, a mouse wheel or something like a, a, a dial, a Microsoft dial, when you're, scroll, when you're scrolling, if I scroll the mouse wheel, I can speed up the presentation or slow down the presentation smoothly. So this is useful if you're controlling the teleprompter for someone else. And then we've got the media editor. If you've recorded a video, it will appear here. And then you've got the ability to trim the start of that video, trim the end, or you can go to your previous recordings. We have a help screen. So here you can see some of the default controls. This is one of those presenter mouse I discussed. That I use to control the software. And then you've got the ability to here to load the instruction manual. And then finally, the about screen which will show you the current version and how you can get a little bit of help and support or you can post a message on the Facebook forum. So I hope you found that little introduction useful and if you need any more help feel free to comment.